It was a time of famine, crop disease leading to poverty and ultimately starvation of millions. Thankfully, it was also a time of ingenuity and belief. A time when one man believed that if something could be done to save millions of lives, something should be done. This man did the impossible. He bred a wheat variety that would yield more, that would fight off disease, and would ultimately go on to feed millions. This man was Norman Borlaug, and this was what came to be known as the Green Revolution. You are always, if you're an idealist, looking for the perfect. A plant breeder and a geneticist looks, or he hopes and always to find the perfect wheat plant that will become the perfect variety that will uh, be the ultimate. A practical person will recognize that in this particular plant or variety, you have the best possible combination for the moment. And you should exploit it, you should use it aggressively, immediately. The Borlaug began was a tradition of taking the theoretical and making it the practical of turning the impossible into possible, of turning research into impact. Such was a fundamental cornerstone that grew through the years into the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center, or CIMIT, as it is commonly known. An organization that would dedicate the next 50 years to fulfilling one mission, maize and wheat science for improved livelihoods. Research for impact or basically research with impact, has always been the mission and the focus of CIMIT. We've been doing that for 50 years now. Norman Borlock, who started basically CIMIT before that time, but his work in those days was complex but relatively easy. Right now the challenge is much higher. In the first place, we have to realize that more than 900 million people are going hungry to bed every day. We don't see it, but it's happening. Within the coming 30 years, there will be 2 billion extra people coming. And that will be mainly in the developing countries. With this exploding, ever needy population, the clock is ticking as CIMIT works to simultaneously fight the effects of food insecurity, rural poverty, malnutrition, climate change, and environmental degradation. The challenge to produce more in a sustainable way is enormous. And that's why we need a CIMIT in the world. CIMIT started drought work in the 70s because drought at that time was already important to farmers. Uh, they didn't have irrigation, they couldn't afford it. Now we have climate change, so we know every five to ten years there is a drought hitting southern Africa. Right now El Nino is hitting again. A lot of farmers lost their harvest. Because of climatic changes, some of these extremes are becoming more frequent and they cause lots of problems in terms of food supply and volatility in prices. We use a lot of biotechnologies, non-transgenic approaches to, for example, we can start to understand what building blocks do we have in our gene banks that will build the future varieties. We accelerate the process greatly with biotechnology. So what we did previously in 10 years, like developing a disease-resistant varieties, now we can do in three to four years. And one nice example of the work of CIMIT is maize lethal necrosis. MLN has caused uh, serious damage to the farmers' fields, primarily because almost 90 to 95 percent of the commercial varieties grown in Eastern Africa are highly susceptible to this disease. So our scientists went to our gene bank and to our maize breeding programs here in Mexico. They brought the materials directly to Kenya, started screening, Within three years, we had resistant varieties. And right now, we have varieties in the field that are doing well, even if there's maize lethal necrosis. We have about 30,000 different varieties of maize and about um, 150,000 different varieties of wheat. And the materials are freely available to anyone in the world. We focus today on improving livelihoods of people. So, maize and wheat science for improved livelihoods. The, the questions are more complex, so we work on systems as a whole. Biofortification, getting zinc and vitamin A and other components in wheat and maize. Because there are so many people in the world still that only live with a major component of the food system, which is wheat, which is maize. 
So we have to improve those crops with micronutrients, but also we have to develop systems that are sustainable. Yellow rust is a big challenge in Western India and Pakistan and Nepal. Spot blotch in Eastern India and Nepal and Bangladesh. And now there is wheat blast. So a number of challenges are coming and how we are trying to address is simple. We are trying to give a package, package of technologies in the form of climate resilient varieties, which can tolerate heat, which can require less water, which have yield potential, and also resistant to different diseases. Of course, everybody knows Simit from the new varieties that you know, that are resistant for major pests and diseases, that grow faster, that are drought tolerant. Very important uh, technologies that are being used by farmers um, and also adopted by farmers rapidly. But something that many people don't think of is, for example, mechanization. We are now having a lot of projects in getting small holder tools. So, for example, two-wheel tractors with equipment to help those farmers preparing the soil, harvesting the crop, and it's very, very successful because uh, we're doing it in a novel way. The helping entrepreneurs, helping farmers to become entrepreneurs, small businesses, so that they become service providers. Eta ortho kari phosolo isabre. Ame kichhi then tonka rojogar kori parbu. Seithre amboron pori bar chua pila ko bollo patho pori parbu. Kima bollo dress khonde dei parbu. What many people maybe don't realize is that yeah, when you have a new variety, it doesn't mean that you have a better crop and that you have a better livelihood of the people. It's more, you need to have a whole system of growing the crop, but also the social system around it. So we spend a lot of time and effort on gender and youth issues, because most farmers are women. So we have to address the specific questions and issues that they have, that we empower them to develop better food systems. The challenges that we have are so complex worldwide that we need to bring together all the knowledge and technologies that we have in the world. And that's the role that we have as CIMIT. So we connect with the advanced centers in the Netherlands, in the US, in the UK, also in Australia and in China. And we work together with the national centers and the small businesses and industry and NGOs in Africa, Asia and South, Middle South America for innovation for smallholder farmers. Because of those relationships, we are able to provide nearly $4 billion in benefits for farmers and other stakeholders in the value chain annually. Without partners, CIMIT would be nothing. Without partners, we would have no impact. And fortunately, 50 years of history, a history like Norman Borlaug, put us really in the center of many, many partnerships. I think CIMIT is very proud of routinely collaborating with hundreds of partner organizations how do we bring that around the table? How do we work with them? I mean, first of all, that we let everybody do what they are best at. CIMIT has to do something together with the partners to avoid the next food crisis, because there are all the signs that the food crisis can come. 50 years ago, CIMIT was ready to fight the issues of those days, which was a major hunger, in the uh, indo gagatric Plain area with Pakistan and India, and also here in Mexico. Today, CIMIT, together with all its partners worldwide, we are ready to combat the challenges that we face. Just as Borlaug fought food insecurity over 70 years ago, today we step forward on this journey as one CIMIT. One CIMIT, united in partnerships large and small around the world going fearlessly into fields where we will get our boots muddy, searching for solutions, into the laboratories where we will be challenged at every corner, and finally into the hearts, minds, and food sustenance of those who need us the most. We invite you to join or to continue on with us in this journey and together we will continue turning food security research into impact. We will continue to improve livelihoods for all.